Hello, my name is Angela Byers Winston, and I'm an associate professor in the School of Medicine and Public Health at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Hello, I'm Sandra Quinn, and I am a professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Maryland and College Park. This is the second in a two part video series that we began with a conversation on culturally aware mentoring. This focuses on strategies and resources now to enhance your culturally aware mentoring. To increase your cultural responsiveness to diversity matters in the mentoring relationship, we suggest that it's useful for you to understand two things. One is diversity related experiences and how those can uh, contribute to institutional barriers that can challenge the career trajectories of many of our diverse trainees. You might be asking yourself as a mentor, how can I identify these barriers? We suggest that there are two factors for you to focus on. One is institutional factors or environmental factors that may be affecting the context of the mentoring relationship. And secondly, are institutional factors that are happening between the individuals in the relationship. Connecting these two factors, the institutional and the individual factors, will help you better understand the cultural context of the career development of our trainees and colleagues of color. The first factor, institutional or understanding the environmental factors, may prompt you to ask questions like, what is the culture of your lab or your research team? How much diversity is reflected in your trainees amongst your faculty? How much diversity is reflected in your promotional materials, for example? You might also ask a question like, how has your lab been welcoming to previous trainees? And does how welcoming it is differ by race, ethnicity, or gender? Those are critical questions, Angela. And some others to consider are, are those that might help us understand the individual. And so you might ask yourself, well, what is my cultural identity? What is my racial or, or ethnic identity? What biases or experiences with racial or ethnic minorities do I bring to the mentoring relationship? And how might that affect that relationship? Talking about these issues of race and racism and diversity, they're often difficult conversations as we've shared before. So I'd like to invite you to to take a look at this self-assessment and really look at your readiness to engage in these difficult conversations. One of the things that I want you to think about and is that we all bring vulnerabilities to the conversation. It might be um, that you have um, a, a family member who is married to somebody of a different race. It might be that you live have lived um, all your life in an only white community. Those are your vulnerabilities that might make this more difficult. But you may also bring some strengths. And maybe those strengths are that you've had, you know, a, a close friend that you've been able to talk to and ask questions of who is of a different race. But we also then recognize that along with your vulnerabilities and your strengths, you may have needs. So maybe I need to learn how to better ask a question of my trainees that allows them to share their experience with me. And our training can help us really learn to do a better job as a mentor. Helps us to think about what are some of the ways that cultural diversity is relevant in our mentoring relationships and how can individual mentors counteract the factors that may compromise the success of our trainees. And so in this section, Sandra and I want to describe a couple of learning opportunities that you might consider as you commit to promoting and advancing your own cultural awareness. These are learning opportunities that are available to you now, they're available electronically, and they're easily accessible. Angela and I are part of a larger consortium and team of colleagues around the country at different institutions. And we have as one focus in the National Research Mentoring Network. And that is really increasing the success of trainees from undergraduate through junior faculty through 
helping them become effective mentees and helping us become more effective mentors. This is our website, the National Research Mentor website, and we really do reach out with a variety of in-person and online training webinars and other kinds of learning experiences to everyone from undergraduates to junior faculty. It's really a training hub and you could take advantage of face-to-face -face mentor training, face-to-face -face mentee training, which is something we haven't talked much about yet, as well as online training and training the trainer workshops. An important feature of the resources that are available through the National Research Mentoring Network is that they are capitalizing on a wide body of research where we've spent time over the years collating and identifying what are the elements that make for effective mentoring relationships. And we have several skill sets that have been identified that include inter interdisciplinary research skills, interpersonal skills, culturally focused skills, psychosocial skills and sponsorship skills. And all of these combined help to think about various ways that mentors can start to focus on different areas of growth in terms of their professional development towards being more culturally responsive and being more effective. Additionally, we have several curricula that are available for both mentors and mentees. They've been adapted for various folk across different science disciplines in the physical sciences, the life sciences, social sciences, community-based research, and we want to emphasize that they're available to you for both mentors and mentees because it's really about the relationship that we're trying to improve. And we need to empower our trainees as well to be agentic and effective in maximizing these relationships. We also have some online opportunities, web-based modules like Optimizing the Practice of Mentoring, which is an asynchronous learning format that only takes 90 minutes to 120 minutes. But this is available for people who are both experienced and inexperienced mentor, and they can do it at their own pace. Another resource that's available to you is through the Center for the Improvement of Mentored Experiences and Research. The website is simmerproject.org, and it's very similar to some of the offerings that we just discussed in nrmn.net. Uh, Additional resources that you might find through the Simmer website include tools for improving your effectiveness in evaluating, assessing, and intervening in your mentoring relationships, as well as consultative opportunities if you're interested in developing new projects and new training opportunities for your own practice. We've also spent a lot of this year developing a culturally aware mentoring training. And so part of what you heard Angela and I talk about in the previous video was really some of the content of that training. And it's really one of the initiatives that's aimed at increasing the success and the effectiveness of mentors and mentees working together. We have a number of training objectives and we achieve those objectives by going through several different components of the module, from cultural awareness, looking at our own selves as cultural beings, learning cultural strategies and behaviors, and then finally, really enhancing our skills and learning to be more culturally confident, committing to this as an ongoing learning opportunity. Over this last year, as Sandra mentioned, we've had the opportunity to implement the culturally aware mentoring across several campuses nationwide. We've served over 60 mentors, and that's growing, most of whom said that they would be likely or very likely to recommend this workshop to other mentors. Most of them have indicated that they're likely or very likely to make changes in their own mentoring. We're particularly excited that many of the mentors who participate in this workshop have reported that they have significant gains in being more intentional to create opportunities to discuss race and ethnicity in their own mentoring relationships. And just as importantly, they have now new strategies to actually uh, address race and ethnicity in the mentoring relationship. As Sandra mentioned, not only do we have this culturally aware mentoring module for our mentors, but we're developing it now for our trainees. And so if you're interested for more information, please contact the NRMN Mentor Training Corps. 
This is our mentor, um, uh, culturally aware mentor team as part of the mentor training core who have worked with us on the cultural awareness module. We are part, as we said, of the National Research Mentor Network, which is funded by the National Institutes of Health. It's part of their national commitment to diversify the biomedical research workforce. And you can connect with us through lots of different social networks. So see on the screen everything from Facebook to YouTube. Thank you for your time in joining us in the second of a two-part series that began with our conversation on culturally aware mentoring and its relevance for increasing the effectiveness of mentoring relationships. And now we have strategies and resources that we provided to you to continue your own professional development towards being a culturally aware mentor.